Hello everyone, my name is Lindsay Thornton and I'm an Education Specialist here at NASA Langley Research Center. Today I'll be demonstrating how to utilize our Shape Your Flight activity. Now to begin our activity, you'll want to make sure that your students are familiar with the forces of flight and how these principles are important to understanding how NASA designs new aircraft. This is an excellent time in the lesson to have your students view NASA's History of X-Planes video to give them an idea of different types of experimental aircraft. Make sure you review how to calculate and measure the area of a triangle with your students. Remember the area of a triangle equals one half the base times the height. The materials you'll need are paper, tape, a metric ruler, pencil, a tape measure, and a calculator as well as the activity worksheet. Keep in mind this activity does require a large empty space for launching the students airplanes. Next you'll want to divide your students into groups of two to four. You'll have students construct a paper airplane in their groups by following the instructions included on page five of the activity guide. To begin your airplane you want to fold a sheet of paper in half lengthwise. like so. Now once you've done that, you want to open it up and fold the top pieces towards the center. You want to try and make things as even as possible so that the two wings, when your paper airplane is finished, are almost the exact same size. Now that's step two. For step three, you're gonna to wanna to take the outside edge and once again, fold it into the center, to that center fold line. Now once you've got that, uh, you'll want to actually fold the plane so that you reverse that inner fold at the center. A lot of people prefer to, when they're making a, an airplane, actually do this the opposite way, but this will allow us to have a nice wing that our students can draw their triangles on. If we do it the opposite way, it, it becomes a little confusing for the students. So our next step, we're gonna actually take the wing and we're gonna fold it over. that on the other side, holding it down to meet the crease. And now we have an, a paper airplane with two nice wings that have no folds on the top and we can draw triangles on the top to find the surface area. Now you may notice that your students' airplanes do gape a little bit at the bottom. Feel free to put a piece of tape there if you like, but they do fly just fine uh, as they are. So once you've got your airplane, you're going to want to draw two triangles on it. And you'll notice here I've used a ruler to find my second triangle. It'll be right at the end. We've got triangle one right here with sides A, B, and C, and they'll want to label those. And then we'll have our triangle two with sides A, B, and C. And of course, side C and side A of triangle one will be the same size. Using centimeters, students will take measurements of the triangle sides outlined in step four. Record the measurements in the part one data table. Using these measurements, calculate the area of each wing and record it in the data table. For part two of the activity, you'll set up a 7.5 meter flight line with masking tape. A flight line is just a runway in the air. Students will stand at the marked takeoff point and aim their airplanes down the flight line. Students will launch their airplanes at the same height for each test trial from the takeoff point. We suggest shoulder level. We want the plane to fly as close to straight down the flight line as possible. Once the airplane is landed, your students will notice it will be off to the side of the flight line, creating a triangle with the distance from the landed plane to the flight line as side A, and the flight line itself as side B. The straight line from the takeoff point to the plane will be side C, the hypotenuse of the triangle. 
Students should sketch their flight triangles on page four and measure each side in meters. Be sure that when measuring side A, it is measured perpendicular to the flight line to ensure a right triangle is created. There are two options to choose from at this point in the activity, depending on the age and abilities of the students. First is the simple option, where students will classify the triangle. Is it a right triangle, obtuse, acute? Then use the measurements collected to calculate the perimeter and area. Or you can choose the advanced option, where students will use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the measurement of the hypotenuse and then calculate the area. Have students compare their measurements to their calculated values of the hypotenuse, or side C. Students will repeat launching their airplanes and completing the appropriate data tables two more times. To conclude the activity, have students compare their results and complete the discussion questions on page four. Have them determine their group's most accurate flight. Review the activity discussion questions as a group. And to take the activity a step further, repeat the activity allowing students to create their own paper airplane design and compare the results. This should lead to a discussion on how the shape of the aircraft affects accuracy of flight. Remember, NASA is always researching ways to improve aircraft. And be sure to check out our videos on experimental aircraft and the X-59. Thanks for joining us here today and have fun implementing this activity in your classroom.